The mainstream media have been consistently biased in favor of biotechnology. In fact, that's especially the United States. When a major GMO food safety scandal erupted in Europe in 1999, uh, more than 700 articles on GMO food safety were written in the UK in one month, nothing in the United States major press. It was described by Project Censored as one of the most underreported events of the year. An analysis of op-eds and opinion pages also showed that they're basically pro-biotech. Uh, there's backroom deals going on. There are people who sit on the boards of these papers and who have a lot of influence that I'm not privy to that drive certain agendas. And we've seen that over and over again. If they do report something negative, they're often attacked. In fact, leaked documents show that uh, one of Monsanto's um, PR companies raided reporters on their coverage of bovine growth hormone, Monsanto's genetically engineered cow drug, and that they attacked those that were negative and rewarded those that were positive. And one was bragging about how they got a certain person taken off of the, of the story at the New York Times and described a whole scene that happened at USA Today. And so it was a concerted effort to try and minimize coverage, negative coverage, and to maximize positive coverage. I talked to Carrie Gillum, who has since written Whitewash, a book about Monsanto and Roundup. And she told me while she was a senior editor at Reuters, that she believed that the people that she was dealing with at Monsanto were trained in intimidation tactics. And so she was just reporting on information about a certain GMO crop, and her boss got called, she got called on her cell phone at home, et cetera. They, tried, they put a lot of pressure on her to try not to cover like a normal reporter. And so they, they play the game very well. Uh, fortunately, she held out and now, and now has written a book. Monsanto has tremendous influence over academia, and they have convinced many scientists who are not familiar with the research that it's all safe and it's all the same. Uh, I was talking to a, uh, a breeder in South Africa who was breeding a crop for Monsanto and then ended up not using it, so he buried it. And I said, so you do the, the cross, you do the breeding and you do the testing and then you hand it off to Monsanto and they do the safety studies. And he goes, yeah, that's right. So you do the selection and then they do the human clinical trials and all that stuff. And he goes, that's right. I said, there's no safety studies, there's no clinical trials. He had no idea. He was just compartmentalized doing the breeding, getting a particular crop variety that would work for his country. He had no idea of the ridiculous safety measures that are done and basically most of them are ignored. So. A lot of scientists are unaware of that. And then there's an attack situation where if you come out against GMOs as a scientist, then you face an incredible knee-jerk reaction written about in the journal Nature, uh, where it's a, they, you're attacked personally, and I'm told hundreds of scientists have refused to do work in this area because they don't want to risk the, being attacked personally, and they want to keep their job and keep their funding, et cetera. A lot of universities receive money from the biotech industry, and if someone is doing research that could damage the reputation of the company, oftentimes the president gets a call. He says, what, you don't like our money? You have a, a professor here who's going to do research that could hurt us. And I've heard many times the administration tells the professor to stop doing research, or there's even a, con a contract where Monsanto gives money with an understanding that no one in the university can do research on a Monsanto product. There was one time when someone was finding downstream of Monsanto factory all these deformed fish. And he was at a university in Florida, but he couldn't do any research because there was a contract that would not allow him to do research. Congress passed a budget that included $3 million for the FDA to promote GMOs to the general public. Monsanto has focused on the media, on academia, on farmers, and also government, politicians and regulatory agencies. So they give an interesting echo chamber where they always say the same thing and they get many people to say it, and they get highly qualified people to say it, and then people believe it. And they've, they've done this kind of tag team on visiting, they did it on uh, visiting uh, president of Ireland that I write about in my book, where every single senator, every single person he's met talked about 
uh, the genetically engineered uh, bill or law he was working on, and he was basically convinced otherwise. They did that. Uh, Monsanto kind of reoriented the Ecuadorian president. They're, they're really good at giving the wrong information well. And so they'll insulate people from the truth and they'll attack it. They'll attack anyone that, and try and discredit those of us who are calling for more science, calling us anti science. And we've documented it. It's very clear what they're saying doesn't, is not supported by science. It's sometimes supported by their fake science. So, for example, uh, when someone was about to publish a research study showing that the GM soy had a certain percentage of less uh, phytoestrogens, which are supposed to be healthy, Monsanto rushed to publication its own study showing that there was too much variability of phytoestrogens to even get a statistically significant answer. Well, the people who had done the independent study that showed that there was a reduction knew the, the laboratory that had done the research because they had done their research too. He said, how is it that you didn't got a different result when you worked for Monsanto instead of us? And they said, Monsanto forced us to use an obsolete detection method, one that was prone to variability. And that wasn't published in the study. That was known only by the people in the laboratory. So they cooked the books, they rigged their research, they were able to counter the research from the other person, and so no one knew that it was more dangerous. Bt toxin is an insecticide produced in corn and cotton and in South America also in some soy varieties. And it comes from soil bacteria. And it's used as a natural insecticide. It was sprayed by plane over areas to kill certain insects. And when it was in the Pacific Northwest, about 500 people reported flu-like symptoms and some had to go to the hospital. In India, they're also reporting similar symptoms when they work in the BT cotton fields. There was a report on 23 farm workers by some doctors in India, and I compared the two, and it was the same kind of symptoms as those who were sprayed with BT. People just leaning against cotton, ball, cotton uh, that's been collected in the fields got allergic type reactions. People cleaning cotton in the cotton, gin, in the cotton uh, cleaning facilities had to take antihistamines every day before working. So, there's that. Uh, people sprayed with Roundup, people working in the fields, they can have higher levels of miscarriages, higher levels of birth defects. In fact, people living near the sprayed areas have higher birth defects, higher cancer rates, higher lupus, higher respiratory problems in Argentina, according to a report by, by physicians there. And there's plenty of research that shows that farm workers are at greater risk to the health dangers of the, insect, of the insecticides and pesticides that they're using. Animals that have been fed GMOs have had damage to virtually every organ and every system. They had multiple massive cell growth or tumors, uh, premature death, uh, toxicity in the liver and kidneys, damage to the sperm cells and damage to the testicles, changes in the enzymes in the major organs like the heart. Um, they've had uh, various tumors and cancers. Um, it just it goes on. It goes on and on. In fact. There's consistencies. Liver is very, very much affected, uh, as are kidneys. Um, immune system is also affected. Digestive system consistently. Uh, when you look at the problems uh, that are in the animal feeding studies, they correlate with the things that get better when livestock, pets, and humans get off of GMOs. So if you look at the 28 different conditions that the humans got better from when they got off of GMOs in the research that I published, it, it matches conceptually with the improvements in the livestock, the farmers report, the veterinarians report, as well as the pet owners and the veterinarian, the pet vets report for dogs and cats. And if you look at the at the epidemiological evidence, the the rise of certain diseases in the United States, they rise in parallel with the increased use of GMOs and the Roundup sprayed on them, and they are very similar in nature to the particular disorders and symptoms that people get better from when they switch to non-GMO.